Hi guys, Dan here from Wellness Academy. Welcome to today's show. A fantastic guest for you today. Really interesting conversation with Kevin Dolin. Kevin is a mental health and physical wellbeing expert and we go through lots of the current buzzwords today, how to deal with anxiety and most importantly, how to protect yourself in here. As always, grab a notepad and enjoy. Kevin Dolin, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure to uh, to be sat down with you. Um, I wanted to take a moment as we've got started, just for you to give us an idea about um, how you've gotten to where you are in terms of the Wellness Academy and wellness. A bit of a bio, really. Um, okay. We've chatted back and forth, and you've got elements of fan- a fascinating story to get you to where you are. So give us just like, you know, maybe some cliff notes about your journey to, to a wellness academy coach. Okay, well, um, I'm in my 62nd year, so it's been a long journey. Um, and uh, started many, many moons ago, but I've, um, I started with being personal training um, a long time ago, uh, and obviously being aware of the fact that the mind, funnily enough, is connected to the body. So um, I came from quite an um, upset childhood. Uh, my dad committed suicide, my granddad committed suicide on my mum's side, so uh, I was always aware of mental illness. I suffered myself quite a bit as a younger kid. Mm-hmm. And so uh, a lot of the times I thought, when I'm feeling bad, there's no such thing as a selfless act. So, yes, I now help lots of people. I'm very happy to say I've turned quite a few people around that were self-harming, that were threatening with suicide, and are now, as far as I'm still aware, I do keep in touch with them, um, they're fine and they're living happy lives. Um, but I'm also happy the fact that I've turned my own life around because yeah, yeah, it, yeah. I could easily have gone down the same route, very easily. Um, it's easy to turn around and say, I can't cope with this anymore and I'm not going to bother. Um, and so it was my, my idea was to change my life. And I went to see a few people, uh, the same as I did with training. I think, yeah, you know a bit, but that's not what I wanted. And yeah, I get mm-hmm. that, but that's not what I asked. And yeah, I understand what you're saying, but again, it's not what I really was trying to achieve. So... The best way to learn how to become um, fit and healthy was to become my own personal trainer, so I did. Um, And the best way to learn how to cope with my own mind was to learn how to help other people. And and that's why I started off with hypnosis, um, and I love hypnosis, and I really, it sort of fascinates and surprises me when it works every time, because it does work every time. But I still get this little buzz from thinking, how did that work? But it, it yeah. does. Um, and uh, I've, I've learned a few little stage tricks that I can do as well. And it's, it's very interesting to do that. But again, when I'd done that, people were coming to me and I thought, there's, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And I, I like to think that when I'm talking with you and get you to open up and tell me what your problem was, if you've come to me with a mental health issue, then there's other things we can do. And so then I went down the, the CBT route and again, yeah. CBT, for those people that don't know. Cognitive behavioural therapy. Um, it's a talking therapy. Okay. Um, very much like psychiatry. It, I, you know, you, I ask you questions and that you answer, and then based on the way you answer, we'll build something around that. Okay. Um, that moved into NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, which is, again, the same sort of thing. Um, I finished up looking at neuroscience, and I spent three years studying neuroscience, okay. um, which I've now finished with. Uh, which is nowadays um, you can actually put people into scanners like, yeah. and um, we can actually see what parts of the brain are doing what. So now people understand far more than they did 10, 15, 20 years ago um, of how the brain actually functions and what part of the brains do what. Okay. Um, and so I find that fascinating. So now when I've got somebody that I'm, I'm, um, I'm working with, I sort of sit them down and I, unless you've got... Um, you insist on having X therapy, then what we'll do is I'll listen to you and basically try and pick the one that I think will suit you, your personality, your issues. Cool. So you um, did your personal training and then also have done the... There's so many things I find it difficult how to describe it in a broad term, but... Should we call it therapy training for want of a better yeah. a Men- better phrase? Mental health practitioner, is that what I am now? Yeah, awesome. So yeah, your mental health practitioning. Um, 
you focus more on one than the other or do you find yourself doing doing both? Um, I do tend to focus more on the neuroscience side of it, um, probably because I, it sort of it's, it's better for me. But again, it's not better for me. It's, I enjoy doing it. Yeah, more. yeah, um, yeah. But it's it's real. A lot of it is down to the the client and and where we're taking it. Because based on what you're telling me, we can sort of work out where we're going to go from yeah. there. Uh, and there are no rules, but a guideline is the thing is never the thing. So yeah. okay. You tell me what you think's wrong with you. Yeah. And by the end of the session, sessions, whatever long it takes, you'll probably turn around and say it never was in the first place. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, when, when anybody sees me and, and has a go working with me, and I've done it when I've been training with other people, the fact that it comes out that my dad committed suicide when I was eight and I found the body, and that's not the issue at all. And some people get it and some people don't. Mm. But um, the reason why I was feeling poorly had nothing whatsoever to do with, with that, in my opinion. Okay. Um, and so the thing is never the thing. Um, and it's always based on an emotion that you are tying to the thing. Okay. So we don't deal with the thing we deal when with the we emotion. find it. We deal with the emotion behind it because it's the emotion that's getting to you. Okay. So um, it was Mental Health Week last week, I yep. think. Um, and I've actually I've also seen um, I don't know whether you, I've seen it advertised but I haven't watched it but I've seen people recommending it being a great watch forgive me I don't know which of the princes it was but they had a conversation I know Thierry Henry was on it have you seen this? I've, not, I've seen it advertised it's been advertised it, yeah. yeah so clearly at the moment there's a lot of attention being paid to it. It's like it's it's more prominent because of the fact that it was mental health week. Yeah. But I'm guessing there are recurring themes when it comes to what people bring to you. I'm guessing probably not the the thing they think it is recurs, yeah. but what it actually is will probably be more varied than the actual thing they think it is. But like for want of a better phrase, buzzwords, yeah. you know. Okay. I know that we talk a lot about anxiety. You know, a lot. Uh, the, the the statistics are up that a lot of professional footballers are going to speak to people. I'm guessing to do with stress. Yeah. What first and foremost do you find uh, the most common things people come to you with? The most common is anxiety. Mm. People okay. say they're ang- they're anxious and they're stressed. Anxiety, um, depression is usually something that's happened in the past. Anxiety is something that hasn't happened yet. Okay. So it's you worrying about something that hasn't happened yet and convincing yourself it's going to happen and it's going to happen badly and and that's the way it is okay and it's have you heard of the spiral um you've got as an example you've got a a married man lovely wife two kids nice house reasonable job um and but he finishes at five and every night at 10 to 5 his boss gives him a pile of work to do and he winds up staying an hour late every night to get the job done because he doesn't want to upset his boss yeah and then eventually his wife said, look, I'm had enough of this. Thursday night, date night. Yeah. Be home for, for half past five and I'm going to book our favourite restaurant for six o'clock. We're going to go out, I'll get a babysitter. And that night at ten to five, his boss comes and plonks it all on his desk. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he thinks, if I don't do, if I stay and do this, my wife, but if I don't, but, and mentally in a nanosecond, okay. he's gone from being a happily married man with a nice wife, two kids, a good job and a nice house to my boss will fire me if I don't do it. If I go home now, the, if I don't go home, the wife will leave me because she's threatened me. And if, if I lose my job, I'll lose my house. And I'll be what? In two weeks' time, I'll be like, I'll be on, in a cardboard box yeah. under the arches. Yeah. And he's mentally thought to himself, his boss is going to sack him, his wife's going to leave him, whatever. And he's, he's just brought that on mm-hmm. all of a sudden. Now, the reality is, if he said to his boss, Look, I've been doing this all the time, and I've got this date night with my wife, and explained it properly. And I'll get, I'll come in early tomorrow morning if you like, but we'll get it done. And he get home to the wife just once. He's not going to, she's not going to leave him if he's late again. Yeah, he's not going to get sacked. It's, it's not yeah, going to happen. Yeah. But mentally, but we believe just, it to be true. He believes it to be true, and he's yeah. just allowed himself to get into that that spiral. Okay. Um, but a- being anxious is part of the way the human body was designed to be. Um, if you go back a long, long time to when um, Darwin has told us that we've all evolved from other creatures. So originally we were supposedly reptiles and then there was the, the big mammals came about and then they eventually the human beings as, as we mm-hmm. are today. 
Um, when a human baby is first born, it's the most, it's going to be the most intelligent creature on the planet, the human beings. The human brain is the most developed piece of equipment we've got. There is nothing else on this planet that can cope, do anything that the human brain can do. Yeah. But for the, when that baby's first born, if, if the mother had the baby in the jungle and then just left it, it'd be dead within minutes. Yeah. Because it can't see, it can't roll over even, certainly can't yeah. sit up, can't walk, can't feed itself, it can't do anything, that baby. Um, <coughs> yet it's going to rule the planet when it grows older. Okay, yeah. Whereas a reptile, immediately it comes out, it's looking for sex, it's looking to re reproduce, yeah, yeah. it's looking for food, um, and it's thinking, am I safe, and, and trying to protect itself. Okay. We have got the, what is called the triune brain, Tri being three, um being one. So in the middle of the, as your spinal cord goes up the top little bit, that's, they call that the reptilian brain. Round that is the mammal brain, the mammalian brain. And then you've got the prefrontal cortex and the other lobes over the top of that. So, and that's the bit where you as a human being, if I said you've got five grand to pick an holiday, tomorrow you could sit down with that and you could pick yourself a holiday and yeah. you could book your airplanes yourself and you can book it all and you can pre-think where you want to go. Do you mm -hmm. want a sunny beach holiday or do you want to go skiing? You can pre-think all these things about the future and you can plan it all out. You can plan where you're going for your evening meals a lot. No, no other animal on the planet can do that. Yeah. They, they live in the moment. We don't live in the moment. We, yeah. have, we can remember our history and we can pre-plan pre pre for the future. Um, but so the, you've got the c capability of doing that, whereas the rest haven't. Yeah. The little uh, reptile, when he's first born, his main thought is, am I safe? Am I safe? Am I safe? Yeah. Am I safe? Because he's little and things are all going to be around him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've still got that built into you. Have you ever walked into a pub or somewhere and you've just not felt... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. No, there's not a fight The vibe's not right. Yeah. The vibe's not right. There's something just doesn't feel right about this place. Yeah. And you go out again. Mm -hmm. And like the girlfriend or your mates are with you. Why have you done that? Well, wasn't feeling it. Yeah. yeah. There's something wrong about that. But maybe tomorrow morning you'll read there was a fight kicked off just afterwards because you could your spider senses could could sense it, but you didn't know why. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's because your that side of your brain is constantly scout, scanning. You might, you could smell petrol if there was that in the hair. You could smell a fire. You can hear things kicking off. You can, you, you see things that you don't know that you can see because they're in the peripheral vision. But if the mirror yeah, yeah, yeah. moves, you know. And so you've you've sensed that because that little bit of the brain is saying, "I want to get out of here. I'm not happy." Mm -hmm. And so it moves you. Equally, the mammalian brain. As you have, you ever felt that? somebody's talking about you or you don't feel like you fit in or yeah and I'm, i don't feel comfortable because i'm not part of the in crowd yeah, yeah yeah so let's imagine we move forward a bit from being a reptile to being a mammal if we were if you you and your girlfriend yeah yeah so you are now in a cave you're it's sixty thousand years ago mm -hmm. you're living in a cave the only thing you're going to eat today is what you go out and catch there's no mcdonald's yet yeah you know pizzas haven't been invented yet yeah so you're going to go and catch it and yeah. kill it. There's other people out there that are probably younger, fitter and faster than you that will probably think to themselves, why would I bother running after something? I'll wait for him to get it and then I'll just clonk him on the head because he'll be <laughs> cream crackered when he comes back with yeah. it and they'll take it anyway. <coughs> so equally, you have got the old saber-toothed tigers out there and other predators after you. So the chances are when you go out to catch something, you probably, either if you're going to get something then you could easily get eaten or attacked or something yeah. hurt yourself. So what's going to happen to the girlfriend back in the cave? However, if she can become part of a community and she can look after other people's children and they can look after her children, you can survive, can't you? Yeah, yeah. If you don't come back, if she doesn't become part of that community, she might not survive. Mm -hmm. So it's inbuilt from all those years, thousands of okay. years ago, yeah. to be want to be part of a community for safety reasons. How am I going to sleep? Well, if I look after your kids while you sleep, you look after my yeah, kids while I yeah, sleep, yeah. We, can, we can forage, we can feed, we can do all of these things. And then, of course, you find out that one of you is good at doing one thing and one of you is good at doing something. And eventually, a little village community will build up. But it's based on the fact, not that I'm bothered about you calling me names or you bothered about me not fitting in. It's the fact that if you do that, okay. you won't want to help me and look after me should my, if I was a woman, my husband, my, my, my man has yeah, gone yeah, off yeah, yeah, yeah. and the saber-toothed tiger's taken him. 
or whatever. Okay. So it's all built around that. So you are designed to have, have you heard of fight, flight and freeze? So saber tooth tiger comes at me, can I fight it? I ain't gonna no. work. Can I run from it, flee? That ain't gonna work, he's much faster than I am. Mm -hmm. If I freeze and play dead, and there's some girls running down there screaming red off, animals are predisposed not to eat rancid meat, but they don't know like you and I what that always is. So what they always want to do is go for the freshest. If somebody's running screaming, then that's the one they're gonna go for. So if you play dead and you just lie there, so even in today's scenario, lying and playing dead. Yeah, freeze is a... Yeah, it can get you out of okay. something and can get you away from something. Um, if, a, you know, if, a, if a guy's coming into a pub looking for trouble, can I fight him? Can I run away from him? Or if can I just... Can I hide, basically? Yeah, can yeah. I hide and play dead yeah. so that I, I get away from it? So that's already built, built into your psyche as from where you were before. Okay. But if you've now got to fight or if you can't lie down, if, you've, if you're forced to fight or flee, then I don't know if you've heard these stories about women picking cars up because the child's got stuck underneath. Now, yeah. me and you together couldn't pick that car up normally, yeah. but she's just full of, pumped full of adrenaline and, yeah. and she's just physically lifted the car up. Somebody's yanked the kid out and then almost a, a back's almost broken and yeah, she's dropped yeah, the yeah. car. It's fine for you to be like that. You're designed to be like that. So somebody smashes through that door now with a, with a gun, you're going to be out the window without trying. A saber-toothed tiger's coming for you, you're going to be able to run far faster than Usain Bolt can even dream of running because you've got a saber-toothed tiger up your backside. And let's face it, you haven't got to outrun the tiger, you've just got to outrun the slowest person in the room because that's the one Fair you'll point. get. Yeah. So as long as you can go fast enough, you're away from it. So immediately after that thing has run for its life, it can come straight back down again. Yeah. If you're anxious or in threat about work, as an example, then you go to work every day. You come home at night, so you, you're safe, but you're going back again the following morning. Now, you know that. The animals can't think about the future and, okay. the, and the past. So, yes, they, can, they know that the tiger is dangerous and they know they're going to have to run, but they don't worry all night long that tomorrow morning I've got to run for my life again. Okay. But you do. So you're designed to be able to pick a car up if you have to because your girlfriend's got stuck underneath it and physically the adrenaline come in there. You're designed to have all your energy go into your legs to pump and run and run faster than you would normally run yeah. to get away from a predator. But you're also designed to come back down yes. when that's all over. Mm -hmm. In this day and age, we don't do that. No. We go up. And we, well, and we go up a bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then your boss comes and gives you some trouble and you go up a bit more. Yeah. And you come home and the wife tells you off for coming in late and the kids are screaming. And when do you get that? Yeah, we're come? in a constant state of stress. And you, because of the way we live nowadays, it's like we're being chased by that saber-toothed tiger 24 okay. hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah. And so you're constantly being in threat up here. How do you help people deal with that then? So what's my, what's my takeaway if I'm sat at home listening to this? How do I, I mean, is there anything I can do when I'm sat at home listening? What's, what's the, the simple things to do? How do you help me with that, even though I can't sit with you wherever it is that I would sit with you for a session? Okay, so let's just think of something that is what you're anxious about. Okay. So do you want to give me one or just pick something? Well, let's say stereotypically, I think a good one, Pick some, like work related. I'm, as you say, I'm envisioning some stressful scenario that I don't know is going to happen, but in my mind, I'm making it real. Okay. And how is that make, what's the emotion that you would attach to that? Fear. Fear. So you've now got a, a fear. Mm. Is that a genuine fear? Mm. Well, I mean, it feels like one, doesn't it? But it, it depends on your definition of a genuine fear, I yeah. guess. So what is the fear that's going to happen? Are you after a specific, or are yeah. we just just chuck anything at me? So let's say I'm, let's say I'm afraid of um, loss of financial income. Okay. So is it true that because of what whatever your boss has said, you're actually going to get sacked? More than likely, it's not. No. So it's not true. No. And is it true that chances are you'll still have your job tomorrow morning? Yes. So. 
we, we then go down quite a long list of is it true, no, is it true, no. We could do this all night long, but you know, obviously there's a limit to time. Yeah. But the basic is I get you to explain where you're going with this. Okay. And hang on a minute, is that really true? And is that actually true? Okay. Until we basically will then con- convince you that actually what I'm saying is rubbish here, isn't it? I'm not... As with the people, my wife won't leave me okay. if I'm written, and the boss won't sack me, and yeah, okay. So I it's about it. being willing to dig deeper than just that first basic assumption, yeah. is that and right? And we just, we'll go through then, there's a, sort of basically I've got a pre-process that can take an okay. hour to go through it all the time, and, and we'll go through it until I'm happy that you, you believe yeah you end. haven't just said it's oh a, well yeah, it's a, yeah, it's, yeah you feel it and it's a change rather than a I was told this guy no so he'll shut up and I stop yeah. feeling bad kind of thing yeah and because okay. we don't want change we want transformation we want you to believe it you really want to actually accept that actually no it, it's not true that I'm going to get sacked okay. and let's face it if it was how, will, how long would it take you there's a huge shortage of work people in the workplace now it's not going to take you long to get another job is it okay um, and so even if it is true that you think, yeah, well, I've done it seven times before, <laughs> I might get into it. OK, well, perhaps if, if your job's that bad, you're either doing the wrong thing or you're doing the thing wrong. Um, you know, is, your job, is the job you've got really the one for you? Because if you've done it wrong seven times before, as I said, you're either doing the wrong thing, aren't you? Or you're doing the thing wrong. You, yeah. you, that you, that there's something missing there somewhere. Um, so maybe it's time to think, what in your life do you actually enjoy doing? Let's... To see if if the job you're doing is, is so. If really... I'm if I'm sat at home and I'm feeling anxious, um, yep. to a point where I'm searching for a change, okay. then one of my main things I can do, from your point of view, first and foremost, you would look at basically is it true? Yeah. Yes or no? Okay. Is it true? Yes or no? Okay. Is it true? And the idea is that eventually we will release that negative emotion that we're feeling. Yeah, because we we work, we keep going through. Is this is it true that your boss is going to sack you? Is it true that you're going to wind up eye on the streets? Is it is it real? Is, yeah, is the yeah. fear real? Okay. Um, if oh, it always happens. It's yeah, bound to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it? No. Do they always happen? Every time you get a new car and drive off somebody, or you've just come <laughs> home and somebody's bumped your car. Oh, that always happens. No, yeah. Really? Yeah. How many? So how many times have you been out this week? 12. How many times has it happened? Well, that's the first one. So it doesn't always happen then, does okay. it? And, and so we can... Do you find that easy or hard to do with people? Like, I mean, I guess it's the good thing is, because I'm thinking about, for example, when you try and speak to people you know and you say that, they yeah. don't always listen to you, do they? No. One of the massive benefits, of course, when someone comes to you is they're hopefully pre programmed as such to want to make a change why come to you why take the time and the money and the effort to come unless i'm pre-qualified like i want to make a difference yeah. but when you do you, is it easy or not to get someone to you know no okay that isn't true you're right versus a mm, no, does that make sense yeah uh, it's one of those um I mean, I've got two roles. I'm a personal trainer and I'm a mental health practitioner. Um, and they're two of the jobs that you don't talk about in the pub, as an example, or in that sort of an environment. Um, because everybody knows more than I do about personal training. <laughs> everybody knows a mate down the pub that says, no, you don't do it that way, mate. Yeah, oh, no, that ain't yeah, how it works, yeah, mate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and, and it's the same with, well, you, oh, you can't hypnotise me then, can you? you know, the, if I got a pound for every time I knew that, I'd, I'd be buying a new Rolls Royce We'll need to tomorrow. do hypnotherapy. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, yeah. Because, I'm... yeah, well, so go on then, do it for me. It's, it's just one of that. no, if you want me to do yes, it, then yeah, come to yeah, see me. But, you know, yeah. I'm, yeah. Um, I'm here to help you. I'm not here to solve problems that you know you just want just for the fun's sake. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so let's get if you really have a need. What's the um, What's the next one? I mean, because I, I speaking to my uh, my girlfriend before, one of the things she mentioned to me was um, overwhelm. Okay. Which you mentioned anxiety is, I guess, the same thing. Now that I'm thinking about it, but like I feel overwhelmed. I'm sure a lot of people feel the same. You think you've got 25 tasks to do that day or on any given job or whatever it is, or I'm trying to change my, my diet. But it's like, I've read Men's Health for the last three months and there's, there's been 25 different bits of advice. Yeah. I don't know what to do. I'm overwhelmed. How does, what do you do with that? So she's trying to think about something and her mind is... Constantly. Well, hers is like, she, she, she mentioned to me, I feel like I've got... 
25 things to do today, my brain feels like it's going to explode. Yeah. Like, how do I manage overwhelm was what she'd said to me. Okay. Does she take time out for herself? Yes. How much time? Uh, she trains a lot in... Both. No, I mean for herself. Yeah, that's for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves her training. No, but I mean, does she take time out with her, for her mind? Mm, yeah, but um, I wouldn't be able to as confidently say yes, no. So let's say no, just for the benefit of the discussion. Yeah. Um, do you take time out for yourself? I couldn't say yes with confidence, so let's say no for the benefit okay. of the discussion. What would, what would you do as you would consider Dan time? Uh, just headspace, quietly being able to do whatever I wished. Okay, that's Whether that's good. be reading or watching Game of Thrones or whatever it is. The problem with that is that everybody thinks that I, you know, my my time is when I walk the dog. My my time is when I'm going for a jog. Well, no, it isn't, because when you're going for a jog, you've got to watch out that you don't fall off the pavement or twist your ankle or run into something, or if there's cars about, you don't just run okay. into a, a car. When you're walking the dog, it's the same sort of thing. Yeah. I'm talking about freeing the mind. Then not a lot, no. Complete, sit down on your own, preferably in a darkened room, but you can be wherever you like, but where there's little to no... Stimulus. Um, yep. And nothing around you is going to come in and, you know, you know nobody's going to walk through the door for a minute. And sit there for 5, 10, 15 minutes. I know people, oh, I haven't got that. They, they say have, that, yeah, yeah it, it, well, how much do you sleep? How much time do you watch playing with Netflix? You know, how much time do you watch, do this? How <laughs> yeah. much time? Yeah, yeah. It depends. One thing in life is we've all got choices. Mm-hmm. And people say they're lost or they're stuck. You're not lost. You're not stuck. Where you are now is where you have designed yourself to be yeah. because you chose to do what you chose to do which is taking you down the life to be where you are Mm -hmm. take one step in a different direction and you've unstuck yourself I agree you're no longer stuck so people that say I haven't got time give me your diary and I will find that time for you and if it means having a little bit less Netflix time or whatever then the the time is there it's how you choose to spend it prioritise and then spend some time which very few people I know if any actually sit down on their own, and just sit and do nothing. Okay. Just let their mind completely clear, and just thoughts will come in, but that's fine. It's your time. Let let what comes in come in, and it'll drift in, but it'll drift out again. With, with this, so obviously I mentioned to you about overwhelm, and yeah. then this is where, is this the kind of thing then you would recommend, I'm there, let's say I'm there, I'm feeling overwhelmed. Yeah. Find five minutes to be able to just... Just sit down. And I mean, the, the first thing is, obviously, if you've got a lot of things to do, you've got to prioritise them, because one's always going to be more important than the other, mm-hmm. and, it, and it's how you feel that should be, not how your boss feels it is, okay. um, or how your wife feels it is, or whatever. But before that, you need to take time out somewhere. You should have a lunch break. So if you've driven to work, go and sit in the car. And just sit in the car. Don't turn the radio on, yeah, and don't sit watching the people walking past. Just recline your seat. If necessary, shut your eyes. Um, you might get a policeman knocking on the door if he thinks you've done something, but um, yeah. oh. but just chill out and relax a bit. You know, if if you've got a room in the office that nobody uses, just go and sit in there. Yeah. Um, if you've got your own office, better still. You know, take your phone, disconnect yeah, your yeah, phone, yeah. And, okay. and just take some time out. Ideally, do it in the morning when you first get up. Prepare yourself for the day. Okay. As opposed to most people get yeah, up yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're Just almost reacting straight yeah. away. Yeah. They get up, they put their feet on the floor and it's a treadmill. And it's sort of you get out of bed like that because your feet are starting to go already. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. as you get up, you're going down the stairs with your toothbrush and your comb. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Making time for yourself, is that is that important to you? It's yeah, it's more important than most people give it any credit yeah, for yeah, is yeah. to meditation is very high. And people think that meditation is, you know, you've got to have a, the beard. Uh, you know, no, got, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah, a lot surrounded with it, yeah. You've got to be, look like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo and you talk, walk around saying, hey, man, and, you know, you don't like it at all. <laughs> um, it's just freeing your mind and clearing your thoughts so that you can gather your thoughts and you can be free of a lot of the stuff that's just zapping along around you all the time. Do you, do you meditate every day? 
Yeah. Or right, okay. Do you like? And there's there's lots of different types. I understand. So you can pay attention to your breath. You can pay attention to your body. You can try and allow the outside thoughts to come in and understand that they pass. Like, do you know? Do you follow a particular type of meditation? Do you, or do you, do you kind of do your own thing based on what you've learned? Like, what what's your meditation look like? I tend to. I don't take any of the. the if you try and do one particular meditation and then you move on to another one, well, you're never going to finish the first one. Um, and if you know, I don't care how old you get to, you will not finish it. So I just like to sit down quietly and just do absolutely nothing, just try and completely empty my mind of all thoughts um, and just let the time be. It's my time and it's my coming round time and I make sure that I get up in the morning early enough to have that built into it. Okay. Um, and if I've got to get up early, to get up early to go somewhere, then you get up a little bit early, don't you? And you can make the time up. What's wrong with having a... If, if you've got t- take a nap somewhere in the day, um, just take a little bit of time out for it. But it's important that you take time out for yourself because people don't. Um, and you know, don't give me that rubbish. I haven't got time. You, there's 24 hours in a day. We've all got the same 24 hours. Um, how, yeah, how priorities you... and choice. Like, I'm, I am a believer that if yeah. you want to find 10 minutes... I think Tony Robbins was the guy that said if you can't find... 10 minutes you need 20 you need yes yeah. Yeah. yeah if it was Tony Robbins or whoever it was yeah. okay cool so but the man that does everybody should everybody uh, I think it was um, Deepak Chopra. Chopra anybody that everybody should meditate for at least 10 minutes apart from the man that hasn't got the time and he should do it for an hour, <laughs> an hour yeah now I do remember that yeah it's, yeah, um, it's really cool and so, it will it'll try and, and, and set you up for the day I think if you were to, you can agree or disagree with me, and I'm more than happy for you to do so, like, would you say that if you were to categorise what people are looking to do when they come to you, whether it's like for hypnotherapy or psychotherapy or CBT or NLP, essentially what we're all trying to do is improve the quality of our life, right? Yeah. Um, and wellness, as, as far as the mind goes, is I'm, I'm really glad that it's become more and more acceptable to talk about. Like, yeah. I'm really, really glad that you don't have to be Shaggy from Scooby Doo to be into meditation. You know, you don't have to be, um, I don't know, some whatever negative connotation you throw at it to be able to sit on the floor in half lotus and and take five minutes to breathe. Yeah. But when, as a mental health practitioner, we mentioned anxiety. You know, we talked a little bit about overwhelm. What else would you say? There's a high chance people are at home and, and feeling that you could try and give people takeaways to make a positive difference to? People, are, um, especially the younger ones, um, uh, and a, a lot of it's the Facebook issues with um, I'm being picked on, I'm yeah, being bullied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, uh, people, and it just, everything's getting on top of me. And again, sadly, we see children that are even committing suicide because somebody said something about mm-hmm. them on Facebook. Um, and so the younger people come to me with this, the stigma that nobody likes me and I'm horrible and okay. you know, um, you've got beautiful girls who are saying that their faces are all wrong and you th- I want a nose job and I yeah, want this done and all okay. because somebody somewhere has told her that her nose is too big because they were jealous of probably but you know, it doesn't really matter about that. Um, but again, to, to not, I, can, I could take a month to explain this Okay. but let me just do something with you. Do that. What is it? This is, what, my foot, my trainer? You, well, what can you feel? Uh, I can feel myself, I can feel the trainer as I press it against my foot. Okay, um, and if you were to do it on there, what would you feel? The table against my which, fingers. Which is? It's a, I, at its base level, I guess an electrical impulse from my fingertip to my brain. Yep, so your fingers are not touching your shoe. Technically, it's your brain that's accepting the information. Yeah, okay. Yeah? So everything is going into your brain. Yes. Um, so if I was to stamp on your foot, it's not, your foot hurts, but it's actually not your foot, it's your head that's telling you I'm in Yeah, pain. yeah, okay, at yeah. its base level, okay. So everything that goes on in and around you is happening in your brain. Processed by your brain, yeah. Right. So we've got this person now, a young kid, and she's being bullied on Facebook. Mm-hmm. The problem is that she's allowing the outside influences of the world to affect what's going on in her head. Okay. Now, if I was to tie you down... Um, you were kidnapped, you can be poked in the eye, we can do anything we want to your physical f- form because mm-hmm. you've been kidnapped and you've been held. I can't get into your head. Yeah. Only you can get into your head. The only person that's got the right 
to upset me is me. Is me, yeah. And I don't care who you are and how big you are, I ain't giving you that key. And there is no need for me to give you that key. So you can abuse me physically, but you can't get in my mind. In the, the war, when people were captured, some people just died. A lot of them survived. And the one that survived allowed, didn't let the torture that they were going affect their yeah. minds. Now, we know a lot more about it now. So again, again, I could talk about this for eons. But if we can get people to realise that... if Imagine that your mind is a lock safe. So, you know, this, you can picture, I'm sure if you close your eyes, if, you, if, you, if I said to you now, um, walk up to your door, and which side is the handle on? The right. Just check, think about it. As in, like, the right-hand door, but yeah, it's on the left-hand side of the so, right door. So if, if, if you were to use the door handle with yeah. the hand that's nearest to yeah. it, would you use your right hand My or right your left hand? hand? Your right, because so the doorknob's there. Yeah. Yeah. From the inside or the outside? So as I walk up, open the door, and that's what I would do. What about if you're coming from the other side? I would probably use my left hand. Yeah, but when you... I never said, come at it from the front, inside or the outside. <laughs> OK. So when you did it, you visualised yourself coming from... From outside into my house. OK. So you visualise that. OK, yeah, yeah. So you have the ability to visualise your front door. OK, Can you yeah. imagine what colour it is now? Uh, like and a... Does it have glass on it? Yeah. Yeah, so you, you can actually pick... Everyone yeah, can yeah, do yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. We can all picture our own front door. OK. OK. So just imagine now that you've got a brain. You know what a brain looks like? Yeah. yeah. Horrible squishy thing. Yeah. Yeah. So just put that into a metal safe. Okay. Yeah. And there's one key. Okay. And it's inside. Okay. So now what? Can't get in it. Who can't get in it? No one. But you? Yeah. Because you're connected to it? Yeah. Well, that's how it should be. So if somebody on Facebook says, I don't like people with beards... <laughs> Is that going to offend you or upset no. you? But people do allow things. So the, the, the thing to try and achieve is to accept that people, that what goes on in the world, you have no influence over what other people are doing and what other people are saying. So, yes, you could drive yourself mad by worrying about what the kids in class are saying. Yeah, or, or the guy at work, or the, the dude in the work. gym, or yeah. yeah, or the people in the gym who think you're too small to be training in my gym, or <laughs> you're too big to be training in my gym, yeah. or whatever they're saying. All of that is, it, it, it's it shouldn't you should not allow, and it's easy for me. You shouldn't allow it, but you're you. You're not anybody else. You're not meant to be anybody else. You were designed to be you, and it's important that you take your life and take it down the path you want to go. Yeah. And so, do you know where you want to be in three, four, five years' time? Yeah. And have you got a plan to get there? We're working on it. And how long is that going to take you? Three, four, five years? <laughs> no, there are, there are genuine things that we're working on that we have to wait for, but yeah, no. And if you'd have asked me that question a month ago, I'd have been less certain on it, but yeah, it just so happens that recently yeah. I've been doing so, which is cool. And do you have a regime for the day and the week? Do you have time for yourself? Yeah. So, yes, but I've not been taking advantage of it. Particularly in the context... I, I, what, I'm, what I'm aiming for with a lot of these, these interviews with people, such as yourself, is to try and find the best way for me to be passionate about what I can take away, so hopefully people at home can do the same. Yeah. And what's cool is I'd never quite thought about even... Rather than trying to, in my mind, picture this big task that's meditation, if just for the first five minutes, even if it's a case of going and sitting on the loo... So it's like I'm out of the way and yeah. just close my eyes and take five minutes. That is definitely something. Whilst I'm not going to sit and ignore you and write it down, I'm going to implement yeah. so that like it can be... In a workplace, the toilet yeah. is probably one of the best places <laughs> to go because yeah. it's, it's one of the few places that you're not going to get somebody saying, you want it on the phone yeah. or something. Um, it, it's, it's just somewhere for you to take yourself out. Um, and there's somewhere... You know, if, if you live in London or Manchester or Birmingham... Leeds, Liverpool, whatever, there are green areas, there are spaces yeah, yeah, you can go yeah. to. Or just just be, just be yeah. you. And we don't need to make a big deal out of it. It can be anywhere. Yeah. And if you're sitting there and there's nobody around you, what is, I mean, have you ever seen, have you ever been on a train and somebody hasn't been asleep? <laughs> no, that's very true. So, but if I'm sitting like that... Yeah, I don't know whether you're asleep I'm or not. I'm not asleep. Yeah, exactly. I'm just completely ignoring the rest of the planet and I'm getting on with yeah, my life. Cool. 
uh, and I'm just going through what I want to go through or just being me, yeah, yeah. trying to be conscious of myself. I'm conscious of my own body. When I'm training, people are telling me, oh, you should be wearing this belt and this belt to do your heart. I can tell what my heartbeat is. I can tell whether I'm going to hurt myself. I'm in my 62nd year, but I'm still personal training. Tomorrow morning, I've got two, two sessions back to back. I won't hurt myself because I, I know how I can push myself. And, and yeah, I can't push myself now, what I could have done 30 years ago. Mm. But I'm aware of that. Yeah, because you know your body. I know my body and I know, I know how it works. So from a, from a physical wellness perspective, um, being a personal trainer and so on, coaching people as well, is there anything that you really value as far as like a habit or a tactic or a routine in terms of keeping your physical wellness for as long as possible? Like, what, what's important to you from a physical perspective? One of the most important things for anybody is, as you're getting older, um, doing things like yoga, which is st- stretching, um, and Pilates, which Joseph Pilates, y- yoga is, um, Pilates to me, it's just like a more energetic form of yoga. Probably mm-hmm. people would disagree with that. that, but that's the way I look at it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it's, it's doing functional movements. Okay. Um, people think, oh, I don't like doing squats. The day, I don't care how old you are, if you live to be 101, the day you die, you will have sat on the toilet at some point that day. And you'll still have a squat. And that's a squat. Yeah. Try sitting on the loo and getting up without doing a squat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So if you can do a squat without, then you can get, as you get older, you can sit on on the chair and get up again. If you want to watch Netflix for an hour, then before you start... You've got to sit down, and when you finish, you've Constance. got to get up. Yeah. And you sitting on that chair now, if somebody was to move the chair away from you, you're going to be in a squat position. And it's just that all the weight's on the chair, not, but your legs have got to get you back yeah, up. Yeah, of course. Um, so so fun- you, functional training. Yeah, if, if what you do requires you to stretch. Uh, but how many times do you see <coughs> people in cars that can't look behind them? But if you haven't got the ability to turn behind as you're getting older so think about it as you're getting older what do you want to do and what do you need to do yeah and doing things like squats is something that you're going to have to do because you're going to have to go to the loo you're going to have to sit down doing things reaching up to cupboards um if you're going to if you've got a two pound one kilogram as it is nowadays bag of sugar and it's on the top shelf then you've got to put it away and you've got to take it back down again so if you can't lift a kilogram up to the top and lift it back down again, then... Um, you, yeah, that's cool. Um, and just basically thinking of, you don't need to do chest press, you don't need to do a lot of the bicep curls, but yes, you do need to pick things up. Have you felt the, um, shopping, the way to the <laughs> shopping bags? Um, I don't know about you, but my wife, when she goes there, she puts all the soft <coughs> things in one bag and all the heavy things in another. Is she the heavy bag? Uh, well, I get all the bags. But <laughs> if, you, if you've got five bottles of something heavy, you know, bottles of, I don't know, if you've got the big two litre bottles of pop or something, we don't drink that, but you know what I mean. If you've got all them in one bag, it yeah, takes yeah, some lifting. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, and, and it, but you're going to be doing that. You, know, you see these people walking along the streets struggling with their bags. Well, that's what you need your, okay. your training function for, picking and, the kids up. Yeah, yeah. And from, a, and from a mental wellness perspective, you're coaching this on a yeah. regular basis. Um, and it's been, in terms of like, my understanding of where most of your learning has come from. You've got qualification after qualification after qualification for up here. Um, but is there anything that you personally value that maybe we haven't talked about so far today in terms of looking after your mental wellness? Um, well, the most important thing I, I would say is to draw, have the shutter that you can bring down. Don't let outside influences that have nothing to do with you in, in fe- invest, invest into your mind and start causing you trouble, starting to get you anxious, starting to get into stress, starting to get depressed. Just be, be aware that you are you. You are a separate entity. It doesn't matter what other people say or think because they're not relevant to your life. Um, they're not the important people in your life. Yeah. Definitely do not choose your friends. You, know, you can't choose your family, but as you get older, you can choose whether you spend time with them or not. Um, and choose your friends wisely. Don't spend your time with people that are going to bring you down. You need to spend time with people that make you happy and lift you up. And if you meet somebody and they don't fit that criteria, then 
it's, it's wrong to have a checklist for friends, you know. Are, are they this, but it's okay this? to but, not spend a significant amount of time with someone that, as you say, doesn't bring you... It agitates you. Don't waste your life surrounded by people that are not helping you, at least preferably to lift your mood, um, but don't spend your time with people that bring you down. And sadly, these people that go on Facebook and say, that little girl looks like this, or your nose is too big, or whatever it is that upsets these people, you don't want to be around people like that. Now, okay, when you're younger and you're at school, you've got to be in the school with those people. Um, and it's quite difficult to change school. But if it's that bad, change school. Um, it, it's, Most important thing is in here. You live in your head and only let the people... You've got the right to upset yourself. You've got the right to think bad things. You've also got the right not to think those things. Kev, it's been a fantastic... It's been lovely. ...talking to you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is Dan Ball from Wellness Academy. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or wherever you're listening right now. You'll find a link on the episode notes. Just tap or swipe over the cover art. You'll also see some offers from our sponsor, and we hope you'll support our show by supporting them. If you like what you'd heard, we'd love it if you could give us a five-star rating and tell your friends how to subscribe. It really does help the show. Another way to support us is to answer a short survey at yourwellnessacademy.co.uk forward slash survey and tell us what wellness topics you'd like to hear about. I'm your host, Dan Ball. Our producer is Scott Towns, created by our executive producer, Ben Heathcote, for Wellness Academy.